Okay, now the server is installed. The next step is to start with our configuration. So I'm going to insert Control or delete. Now it's now called PCE. So I'm going to log in as my administrator, which remember this administrator was a local account, was a local administrator before, right? It's now been promoted to become the domain administrator. So now we have a domain controller ready, and we now have a server. Okay, please let me have one class. I don't know why you guys are talking. Now, if you go to local server, you'll notice that our work group is no longer work group. It's now called what? A domain. If you go, if you right click to your network sharing, it's now called, it's still on public. Um, let's go and check if our network adapter is still there. Okay, I need to remove 127 now. Huh? It says the DNS server list is empty. The local IP address will be configured as a primary DNS server because Microsoft DNS server is installed on this machine. So we say, okay, no, it's fine. So it uses the local IP address as the DNS server configuration. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Okay, the next step we need to do is to set up... The next step we need to do is to set up... Um, a DHCP server because we're going to be deploying another server system as well. So we've, we're done with that task. We've created the Active Directory already, and um, that has been done. That has been done. So if you notice, we have the DNS domain system. We have uh, the Active Directory domain system. We have the DNS that tells us about the DNS. You can see the information. So event log actually is on the dashboard. You can actually monitor your server in real time. Okay. There's a whole lot we're going to do tomorrow as well. Let's see how far we can go today. Now, that's five. I'm supposed to add a server. I'm supposed to have, add a server to this domain. I'm supposed to add this a server to this domain. So what I can do, um, let me see. I don't know if I still have, I don't know if I still have, um, I think I should have another computer. But that will be fine. Let's just go and do the deployment. Okay. Now, we're going to install server core on our second server system using Windows Deployment Services. Um, let me check if I have my image intact. Okay, my image is there. My CD is there, so it's fine. I'll be able to copy the, the image system. Just a minute. Okay, I'm going to shut down this server system, but before I do so, uh, what I'm going to do is um, 
We're going to confirm our Active Directory roles have been stored. If you go to Tools, you'll see all the Active Directory you have there. Active Directory users and what? Computers. This is where you create users, your organizational units, your computer groups, your security groups, even your distribution groups. That is where you create them. Okay, we've changed the server name, we've changed the date and time, we've configured the network. The next step is to add a server to this domain. And that is what we want to create now. We want to add server core to this domain by installing the server core computer. But do before we do installation of before adding the server core to this computer, we're going to configure the server core. But before we proceed to that, before we shut down the server, I want us to install the DSCP because we need the DSCP to distribute IP address. Are we together? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to dash, the dashboard, and I'm going to click on Add Rules and what? Features. So I'm going to click on Next. Next. Of course, it's still selected on my server 1. You now see it's now called server1.pce.what? Local. So I'll click Next. I'm looking for the DACP, so I'll click on the DACP. So that's a DACP role service. So that's the features needed. So I'm going to click on Add Features. Next. I'm going to click on Next again. Next. Of course, Restartive is needed. Always best practice. Then we'll click on Install. So I'll allow the DACP server to get installed. Then we'll start with the configuration. If you notice, we still have the same icon like before, right? You can see the yellow icon on the top here. Now, the next task, task we need to do is to... Okay, just a minute. I don't know why my server is really funny. So, we'll close the tab now. proceed now we, we go to the notification bar <clears throat> now you notice that it says post deployment configuration do you see that always make sure you follow that so we're going to click complete DACP server configuration now the wizard comes up it says to create um, the following security group for delegation meaning we need to have a DACP, uh, a DACP administrator and a DACP user which of course is your normal uh, user system of course, the authorized DSCP server should um, uh, should can be joined can be authorized if the computer is joined to a domain. So we will just follow the steps by clicking next. It's going to ask us which administrative account you want to use. Now, do you know why we need Active Directory authorization? All DSCP servers are authorized through Active Directory. Are we together? Meaning, a user who belongs to a domain have to authorize the server. Now, I might use this server, this DSCP server. As a backup, but instead of authorizing it, I'll come here and say skip Active Directory authorization. Now, this computer, this JCP server will not issue IP address to any clients. Are we together? It will be there, but it's not what? Authorized. I'm just using it as a backup database, something like that. So that if server one dies, I can immediately authorize this and it starts issuing IP addresses to clients. If there's an issue, just like a backup. But we'll talk about some of the new improvement Microsoft imp um, implemented in 2012 uh, DACP, whereby you can have two DACP at the same time, running at the same time, but they're able to fail over. I think, but next, I think his next book will talk about that. We'll be talking about uh, ad administering the server system. So I'm going to use my default administrative account since I don't have anybody created already. So I'm going to click Commit, and it's done. I'll click Close. The server is authorized, it's ready to be configured. So all I need to do now is to go to the tools and click on Act and DACP what? Server. Do you see that? DACP there. You can always come here to check your performance of your DACP. You see, one of the things about this tool, of the dashboard, it tells you about everything the server, it's, it's how, how the server is performing. And you, tell me, you see the performance here. It tells you also performance. Let's go to the... Um, Let's go to the DNS. If you scroll down now, it also tells you 
Uh, there's no name resolution here. It also tells you the performance of the server system. Are we together? Yeah. By the time we start using it, you'll be able to see some of those events and some of those performance uh, that are, are data. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on Tools. We'll go to DHCP. And of course, the MFC console comes up just like Windows 8. Uh, sorry, uh, Server 2008. I'm going to expand it. You notice I have my IP version 4 and IP version 6, right? I'm going to expand this. Now you notice on IP version 4 it says it's activated. If you notice that's the Mac there with a green icon, with a good Mac, with a green icon, it means that it's active. So what I need to do now is to add a scope because I need to assign IP addresses. So since the server call one is store is going to be being dot two, dot one dot two, we're going to change the IP address. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say new scope. I'm going to say next. I'm going to type it scope. Scope A. Main server. Next. My range will be 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.10. Okay, so I'm going to click next. My exclusions are two IP addresses, which is 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.2. It's 10. How can you exclude everything? Dot two. Are we together? Because we want to take one for this. One is already used by the server. Two, we want to use it for the server call. Are we together? So the DSCP server will start assigning from what? Theory upwards. So I'm going to click add. And that's it. I'm going to click next. We're going to leave the default days, eight days. We want to activate the scope now. We want to configure other options. Definitely yes. Uh, we don't have a default gateway. Uh, for the DNS, we'll come in here and type in our DNS IP address. Dot one dot one. We we'll click add. It's going to process that. It's done. We'll click next again. We don't have a Win server. Do we want to activate the scope? Definitely yes. And we'll click on finish. Now, if you notice. Our scope has been set up. So you can display settings. It says total IP address 8. You see that it tells you what IP address is available. It was 10, but it's telling you only 8 is available, right? Are we together? Of course, it tells you the exclusion, no list yet. Reservation, some of these things I'll talk about them later on as we go on to the topic. So on our options, we only have on this on the scope options, we only have the DNS. Huh? Now this is for server options. If you want to add server options like your default gateway and all that, you can actually come in here and put those informations in as well. Like for example, if you right click and you say configure server options, this is where you select what will be the options for the server, like routers. Wind servers, the same information you did on the scope. Are we together? You know, like additional information. You see, the scope only gives you default gateway DNS, wind server. But there are some information that the scope do not have. For example, they probably don't have um, an LR, uh, LPR server. They don't have a host name. Are we together? They don't have, um, let me look up for something else. Uh, a broadcast address. Are you getting me? So if I check this, I will need to enter the broadcast address. I will together. But I'll come up, I will come to this later on when I talk about DSCP server. Not now. Okay, that is the scope. It says the scope is active. And we're ready to, to move. Now you can go to the view icon. You can see where you... Most of these options allows you to refresh your scope settings. Uh, we'll talk about this later on. This is where you create a multiple scope, call them super scope, and all of that. So you can always refresh from here after the settings. Then the you see the icon comes out properly now, right? With the green icon, huh? 
you just go to the top then you say refresh huh because you just assigned it huh so you can either refresh it from the from the main dashboard or you can refresh it from there by clicking on that button there okay guys our scope is ready and the next thing we need to do is to install our server system so uh, there's no need for me to there's no need for me to have this server up and running so to save resources I'm going to shut it down 